Specialized has reinvented the Crux as a gravel bike. It now comes as a hyperlight racer. But was this a good move? And what even is it now? Is it an endurance road bike? Is it a gravel bike? Or is it still a cyclocross bike? Let's take a look. When I first saw the new Crux, I, like kind of everyone else, was wondering what an Athos was doing with gravel tires. But it is a little more nuanced than that, but essentially that's what you're getting. The low weight makes this an excellent climber and it is brilliant fun to ride on faster gravel roads. It's not the best for loading up and going long, but if you want a fast gravel bike, this is a brilliant option. When it comes to the ride, climbing is the Crux's party trick, so that's where I'll start. And it isn't just good for winching your way up the steep stuff. I was dead impressed at how well the Crux climbs the technical climbs too. There's a byway near me that goes up, well, what can only be described as like a riverbed. It's a great test of both your skill and the bike's capability. And if you want to ride it yourself and see what I'm on about, I've linked the Kamut segment in the description. On a climb with decent step ups and large rocks to navigate, the low weight of the front end is a real help as it is super easy to kind of like just pop the front wheel up. Those rocks and step ups though, they um, combine with the gradient and that they will eventually slow you down. It is here that the bike displays an impressive slow speed stability. I was easily able to ride on narrow strips of smooth ground to the side of some of the rocky sections and cleaning the whole climb does wonders for your confidence. Really, it's a shame that no one was around to witness such sublime skills. On faster sections, the increased wheelbase comes into play, as does the longer reach and lower stack to deliver a long and low riding position that's just on the fun side of stable. It was great fun flicking from kind of one line to the other and the Crux is great at making you feel like a more skillful rider than you actually are. Where I feel that the Crux really shines is when you're piecing together gravel sections with stretches of road. Around me, that is really the only way to do gravel riding, but with how well the Crux rides on tarmac, that just isn't an issue. The bike is so nippy that twisty back lanes are some of the best places to ride this bike. The tire size provides a huge amount of corner and grip, and there's no issue when you run into a section that's poorly surfaced. Now, comfort with the 38 millimeter Pathfinder tires is good, but it's not revolutionary. Personally, most of the comfort that you're gonna get on a bike like this comes from the tires. And so the comfort that you're gonna get depends on the width that you run. I have to say that something like the Diverge with its future shock up in the head tube is gonna be a bit more comfortable, but I wouldn't call the Crux an overly harsh bike either. If you've got the wider, smoother gravel roads that we generally associate with like North America, you might want something with like aero tube shapes to help you uh, along while you ride over 30 kph for the 200 miles or so of dirty Kansa. But on the twisty and tight gravel stuff around me with its like endless up and down nature, the Crux's low weight nippy ride and excellent handling is just what I want. And then if you're looking for a gravel bike that's still an excellent road bike, this is a serious contender. The rather slick Pathfinder tires will be helping it, but I'd be happy to stick a set of uh, like proper road tires on and use it as a slightly more relaxed road bike. It'd make an excellent endurance bike, for example. When it comes to the frame, Specialized has used the same layup tech that was developed for the Athos. This was explained well when we took a first look at the Athos, but in essence, the tube shapes do away with the need to reinforce certain areas with extra material. Uh, less resin gets used and thus you have a lighter frame. That's what Specialized says anyway. The S-Works model that I have here gets the 12R carbon and a 56 centimeter frame weighs in at 725G. The fork is around 400G, depending on how much steerer tube you chop off. And this fork is shared with the Pro and Expert bikes that use 10R carbon and are 100G heavier. 
basically that's me hinting that you can have a uh, slightly heavier frame set for significantly less. There's no hiding of the cables within the head tube and I'm a big fan of this from a practicality standpoint. Also ticking a box uh, for this is the threaded bottom bracket and the mounting point for a front derailleur. Other things I like include the lack of drop seat stays and they create a smooth transition from the top tube into the back of the bike. I really like that. The seat post is a standard 27.2 millimeter model and the external band clamp is great to see as well. One thing that's really missing for me is any mounting points. Um, you don't get the usual top tube mount up here. You do get an, a bottom bracket mount for an extra water bottle. But the real thing that's missing for me is mudguard eyelets. I would have loved to have seen them. Specialized says that that's not really what the bike is for, but I think it would have opened up the capabilities of this bike. Still, you can mount bags, just you've got to use straps. The geometry is tweaked from the old Crux, and while it isn't a full-on adventure bike geometry, I'd certainly say it's more gravel bike than cross racer. The reach is longer, the stack is shorter, the bottom bracket is dropped, and the wheelbase has been extended. The idea is to give you a bit more stability on the faster gravel paths while still being nimble enough to throw around the tight turns of a cyclocross course. I'd say that Specialized has got the balance about right here. Some gravel bikes, to me, they just feel dull and boring, but the Crux handles really, really well, and it's just hands down a great bike to ride. I think one of the reasons that this still feels fun is that Spech have um, added most of the length to the back of the bike, rather than increasing the rake or making the head tube slack. It's a nice balance that I can see a lot of roadies being very happy with. One of the main benefits to the geometry changes can be found at the clearances, um, especially at the back with a 700 seat wheel you can get a 47 millimeter tire in there or on a 650b obviously that goes up the real benefit though comes with a cyclocross tire around a 33 millimeter tire you've got tons of space for mud clearance and i have to say that in the muddiest conditions the bike does an excellent job at shedding mud the pros well they'll still be swapping bikes every few laps. That's mostly because their gears are still gonna get a bit jammed up. Um, and you know, if you can have a clean bike, why not? But for a privateer, you can get to the end of the race with the wheel still turning. And I can't describe how nice that is. SRAM's red ETAP access group set has a lot going for it. And this Explore model, I've actually found to be my favorite yet. The 10 to 44 tooth uh, cassette at the back. It's really nicely spaced actually, and there's no silly jumps. So uh, the feeling at the pedals is actually quite nice. Combine it with the 40 tooth chainring, and for me, there was, you know, a gear for just about any occasion. The 40 uh, 10 combination, well, that creates a gear ratio of about a 53 13, somewhere in that region, which is nice you know you can push along on the flat with that and then the 40 44 well that's just you know that'll get you up anything now i will say one thing and that is that every SRAM, red etap whatever it is group set that uses a 10 tooth cog that i've ever used well it's not really been a fan of going into the 10 tooth um i've always found it very very um fiddly to set up as well and realistically it's not what i expect of a top end group set and then we come to the front end and we've got the red power meter this thing has been brilliant the tater's consistent it looks reliable to me and well most importantly for a bike that's going to get washed a lot and beaten up it's been really really robust that thing is a real winner of this group set the brakes are also a big highlight with the SRAM Red group set and the Crux comes with 160mm rotors front and rear, providing loads of stopping power for when you have a scary moment. The modulation is great and the levers are comfortable. When you consider the simplicity of the shifting, it really is a very good group set overall. Now, 
Moving down to the wheels and Roval provides them in the form of the Terra C. This is a very nice gravel wheel. They're light, they complement the bike really, really nicely. The mid depth means that the handling is quite good and they're wide internally. Sitting on them on this bike is the Specialized Pathfinder in a 38 millimeter width. For dry conditions, it's a brilliant tire. I really, really like it. Introduce any kind of moisture, and I mean literally a bit of dew on the grass, and well, it gets very, very interesting. You really do want a bit more bite if you're gonna be riding in British conditions. Uh, for me, part of the fun of off-road riding is losing traction in the corners, so I have had a bit of a blast on these, but yeah, if you were doing this um, a lot, you'd probably want something with a few more nobbles. I did have some tubeless setup issues though. A new set of valves and some fresh rim tape did the job for the rear, but the front is still losing air from somewhere. It's at a rate where my traction improves through the course of like a three hour ride. It's not the biggest issue in the world, um, but it's a very expensive bike and you'd kind of want perfection for that. Roval also provides the Terra C bar, which is very compact and slightly flared for a comfortable position that's easily accessible in the drops. Wrapping the bars is a uh, super CAS tape and it provides plenty of grip, though could, for me, be a touch thicker. The Alpinist seat post comes from the Athos and does a fine job of holding the S-Works power saddle firmly in place. Speaking of which, I think that's an excellent saddle for a bike with a long and low position like this, and I was very comfortable from the off with the power. Your bottom might disagree, but that's kind of a personal preference. The first race that I did on the Crux was part of the uh, Wessex League. It was the first race that I'd done in well, ages, and I was so excited to get back to racing, but also to ride the Crux between the tape the course had everything, well, a little bit of everything. It had some downhills into ruts. It had some single track through loamy soil. It was full of fast corners, tight corners, long straights that you had to put out power on. It was quite bumpy as well. And, you know, seeing as you ask, I went from the back of the pack to eighth, which I'm actually quite proud of. And, you know, if it hadn't been for the fact that I caught a, you know, got a bit of a sore throat and then caught a cold and and then got covid and that was two weeks off the bike for one race worth it i'd say the mostly dry fast conditions for the race uh, suited the crux for what it has become really um, but it still rode well in the loamy forest section and add in that it was nimble around the switchback turns and i'd say that this is still a bike that is well suited to cyclocross racing Exiting the loamy section onto the power climb really showed how well the Crux climbs and I felt confident in attacking the climb on each lap, kind of knowing that I could open a gap to whichever rider I was with at the time. My effort wasn't going to be wasted and when you're averaging close to 180 beats per minute for an hour, that's a very nice assurance. Cornering was a joy and it was nice to be able to push the bike and have it simply track its way calmly through the corners. While I wasn't able to get a muddy race in on the Crux, I did manage to cake it in mud plenty enough to have faith that the added tire clearance was doing its job. Despite the tight gap between the chainring and drive side chainstay, there was no buildup here, which is undoubtedly helped by the fact that there's very little buildup taking place right beside this area behind the bottom bracket. Now, nitpicking. This is cyclocross specific, really, but when I've got my hand on the top tube when I'm going to dismount, it feels a bit low. I'd have preferred this to be a bit more of a horizontal top tube. It would have made shouldering easier as well, but also it would make that control just a little bit easier. It's a very expensive bike. It sounds nitpicky, but it's gotta be perfect, hasn't it? In terms of money, this is a top-end bike with a top-end price, and I will say that, like the Athos, you will have just as much fun on the less expensive Pro, Expert, and Comp models. In fact, 
if you have this much money and you want a bike primarily for cross racing, get two of the comp bikes and stick one of them in the pits for emergencies. I won't even try to justify the price, but I will say that if you've got the cash, then the Crux won't disappoint you. Expensive, well, it, I was gonna say it might be. Expensive it is, but the Crux is a fantastic bike that is brilliant as a cyclocross bike. It is amazing for batting it through the lanes and it is a gravel bike too. It climbs incredibly well too and not just in a straight line, it's great at the technical stuff and it's a barrel of laughs in the corners. Okay, so it's not going to be your first choice for loading up on adventure rides, but for going fast, this is a serious contender. And then finally, bringing it back home to what the crux is for me, if you're going to race cyclocross, you're going to absolutely love the low weight and the massive tyre clearance. Now, I mentioned the Specialized Diverge earlier on in the video, that is the more adventure brother to this bike. You should definitely check out our video review where we had some fun on Salisbury Plain. And Matt has recently checked out um, a lovely Kotick, which is basically the polar opposite to this bike. Um, but it's well worth a look because it is beautiful. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next one.